While Wordsworth would likely be appalled at the speedy convenience of it all, drivers can enjoy car touring. From Keswick, a scenic 20-mile loop south reveals the essence of Lake District charms. Newlands Valley is a majestic place. If it had a lake, it would be packed with tourists. But it doesn't, and it isn't. The valley is dotted with old, family-run farms. With tough times for small farms, most of the wives supplement the family income by running B&Bs. Many farms in the valley rent rooms. I've been recommending the Cascadale Farm in my Britain guidebook now for over 20 years. Margaret Harriman's welcome is as warm as ever. And staying in her B&B, there's no doubt you really are on a working farm. Their son, Sean, will someday run the farm. One thing he's already in charge of is shearing the sheep. Each of their 1,500 sheep need to be sheared each summer. Why do you have to shear the sheep? Well, for husbandry reasons and the welfare of a sheep. Um, and then it, they're sheared when it's warm weather, so it's a great relief for a sheep once it gets sheared. But the fleeces are no longer the moneymaker they once were. In fact, recently, prices were so low, farmers here just burned the wool. Today, with new uses for this natural fiber, wool prices are higher, so Sean and his dad collect the fleeces into bales. Does it hurt the sheep? No, no, no. No, it's, it can be very therapeutic. It just glides by the skin, so it doesn't hurt them at all. Therapeutic? <laughs> When car touring, make a point to stop and get out. From the Newlands Pass Summit, there's a rewarding little walk to a frisky waterfall. From here, the road descends, winding scenically past a farm hamlet and to delightful Buttermere with its popular lakeside trail. Our loop then climbs rugged Honister Pass with its wild and weather-beaten charm. At the summit stands the Honister Slate Mine, England's last still-functioning slate mine offers tours. You'll put on a hard hat, load onto a bus for a short climb, and then learn about the region's slate industry from an enthusiastic guide. What we describe that rock as is green gold. It's called green gold because it represents today the finest roofing slate in the world. It is the number one, the Rolls-Royce of slate. On that rock on the far side, as we looked when we were down below, there are bothies, little stone huts where the miners used to live. Because what we have to remember here is pre-First World War, through the history of mining, if you worked here, you lived here. Right, in we go, this way, folks. Narrow shafts lead deep into the evocative Victorian mine. You'll be thankful for your helmet Standing inside the mountain, surrounded by slate scrap and the beams of a dozen headlamps, you'll learn the backstory of the stone that roofs so much of England. Imagine you're eight, ten years old, working underground, maybe for 10, 14 hours a day, and your job was to assist your father and your elder brothers in drilling the rock. I think you're going to get a hang of this one very quickly, folks, because you can imagine there's someone at this end with a large sledgehammer. And each time you hit it, turn it, twist it, push it. Hit, turn it, push it, and back into the rock. I don't know about you, but a tour like that makes me glad I work and live above ground and in the 21st century. Freedom! Completing our loop, we pass humble hamlets and the lush Burrowdale Valley, always open for serendipity. Coming upon an inviting gathering, we pull over and find ourselves at a cricket match, complete with Cumbrian sausage on the grill and a keg of local brew. The gang gathered here bragged their field was named England's most beautiful cricket pitch. And I can see why. But when you hit the ball, do you like run around the bases or what do you do? No, you just run out of the end. And this gave me yet another chance to try to understand this bewildering national pastime. So the pitcher is called a bowler. <laughs> yeah, he is. Or your bowler, our pitcher is your bowler. And what do you call your batter? The batter. All right. 
Oh, so now, oh. is, that a, is that a point? That's a four. Four runs. If he hits it over the boundary, which is a white line in front of us here, he gets four. You know, I'm still confused. I'm still confused, but I'm less confused than I was good. a few minutes ago. Right. Well, if anybody <laughs> confuses anybody, I can. Well, you're doing a good job.